Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back uh, to Dunneen Fine Arts Center virtual space. Today, we're so pleased to be speaking with the artists of Cloth in Common, um, an international group of creators. And um, what an amazing show that we have in, in our halls now, don't we, Catherine? Yes. Fantastic. Really um, masterful pieces. Yes, and uh, we'll, we'll let we'll let um, Carol Kusmal and the group speak for themselves. But um, a very interesting mixture of a couple of um, different themes. So uh, to learn more a little bit more about Cloth and Common, they do have um, a great website, uh, clothandcommon.com. Uh, and for those who can't or won't or do not want to come in um, to the art center which is open Monday through Friday, 10 to five. Um, we've made a little video for you. Well, Catherine has. <laughs> She's mastered the medium over COVID, so. I just have to say a little disclaimer that the hardest part of making these gallery tours is matching the right music. And this music is a little bit more lively than I might have chosen, but the name of the piece is rainbows all around and i thought it was very fitting <laughs> for the for the works so hope you enjoy yes Thanks, Catherine. Um, now we wanted to um, learn a little bit more about the group itself um, from Carol Kusma. Carol, are you there with us? I am here. Excellent. Uh, so tell us more about Cloth and Common. How did it get started? And um, how do you work together? I know it's got to be a challenge uh, working internationally. So it's a challenge, but it's also a joy. Um, and it's kind of what 
inspired me to begin the group. Um, I wanted to connect with artists from other places. And um, there are similar groups that I had admired. And I uh, was at a conference, um, an international conference of art quilters in Nebraska. And I was able to connect with someone who had originated a similar group. And uh, by the end of the conference, three of our current members had already made a commitment to join me in Cloth and Common. And then um, <clears throat> it just kind of grew from there. We have 12 members from all over the world. And uh, we, we don't chat a lot because we're all busy artists, uh, but we do take turns uh, issuing ourselves a prompt every two months. And um, we've been going together for four years doing this. Um, the first two years, we focused on all different kinds of unusual prompts. And then the second two-year cycle, um, which is the work that's in the gallery uh, this summer, we focused on communities, which um, when we started with communities as a theme, we had no idea what was gonna happen in our world <laughs> last mm -hmm. year. Um, and the two different themes that we uh, present at Dunedin Fine Arts Center this summer. Um, the first one was international, and we worked on that in 2019 before we had any idea that COVID existed or would exist. And uh, then the second one is green spaces, and it's about how um, the green spaces in our communities kind of helped us survive uh, being in lockdown because we were able to get outside a little bit. Um, so those are the two collections that we have to share. Um, what else should I tell you? I, I'm curious, how, no, no, did you, how did you, <laughs> were you, did you have to, do you had an idea of the number of people you wanted to be part of the collective to start with? And did you have to limit it? Did you have more of a response? And how did well, um, as I said, we started with just three and myself, and um, then I took recommendations and I did some research. Um, we are all members of a much larger group called SAQWA, Studio Art Quilt Associates, of which Lisa was the president. <laughs> mm. And um, there are 4,000 members, artist members in that group. And so that made it much easier for me to find people in Korea and Japan and mm -hmm. Germany and places where I didn't know any artists. So that's how we got started. So I just um, kind of made an invitation letter and explained what kind of commitment would be required and um, sent them out. Uh, some people said they were very interested, but there was no way they could fit it into their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I, I invited a gentleman um, who lives in Japan. Uh, his name is Jim Hay. Some of you I'm sure have heard of him. And he told me he was too busy, but he recommended uh, our Mikiko Takase who um, has been a wonderful member, there she is waving, <laughs> of, of Cloth in Common. So I was grateful for his recommendation yeah. of Mickey. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a nice size. It's a nice intimate group. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't think you'd want it to be too much larger, especially with presenting right, um, right. wonderful exhibits like we have now. And looking at the website, it, it sort of, it seems like um, the participating artists change from, from well, show to show um, or year to year? Or? Well, at the end of a cycle, which is about two years, um, the members have an option to continue for another two years or to step aside and let someone else step in. Yeah. 
Um, so we have several members that have been with us since day one. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've had to say goodbye to a few and, and welcome to a few others. So, well, yeah, we're fluid. Let's meet some of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's meet some members of Cloth and Common. Um, well, our, our first member was Jorta Ina, uh, but she's can't be with us today. So Carol, if you could please just uh, kind of touch on, okay. on her work and All right. participation. This, um, can we go back to the first one? Oh, I have that one. Uh, here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, this one was her international contribution, and it was about a time that she had visited Morocco, mm -hmm. and she talked about the light and the colors that are there. Yeah, there was a beautiful quote from Paul Clay that was included in her statement. Um, I think this might be the description think, um, for the, the garden piece. Right, for the green space. Yes. Sorry, okay. This is actually... Yes, this is her green space. Yeah, you've got, you just got the descriptions. Got twisted. Backwards. Backwards. That's okay, that's okay. This one is her green space and she talks about, and Deb might want to step in here because Deb speaks German and she helped Dorte Ina with her uh, statement about these allotments, garden allotments. Deb? Yeah, um, okay. they're, they're, they're public spaces that you can rent and you can plant your own garden. So it's especially good for people who live in apartments or don't have yards and things like that. So it's a wonderful feature of, uh, of German society. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're in all kinds of big cities, small towns. And she titled this Bliss in the Rectangle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, lots of beautiful um, surface techniques and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. effects in that piece. Yes. And hers, hers happen to be kind of across from each other. Um, her Moroccan inspired pieces just over here on this wall, so. And I, it seems that there are other countries who have the allotment system that from what I could tell in some other descriptions, but I was really intrigued by that. And I've seen, I've heard reference to them. Uh, I love, I'm a big fan of British telly and the <laughs> telly shows. And so other countries for sure, I, I thought maybe the U.S. could learn something from that practice. Here we have community gardens, but I think this is more a, a governmental uh, Actually, my friend in Maine has a, has a an allotment garden. Oh, really? So. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we're on to yeah. it. Then. Excellent. Yeah, I know my my neighbors have a huge garden. Their whole backyard is a garden. It's beautiful. Um, okay, thanks for sharing um, about mm -hmm. Dorzina, Carol. Um, I don't know if Makiko can hear us or speak yet um so Mikiko would you like me to tell about your work can you unmute yes uh, okay there can you, you are oh ah, yes yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So, I, good i'm sorry i can't speak english you <laughs> oh it's fine it's okay <laughs> okay try <laughs> okay so here's um, Mikiko's uh, green space piece. Yes, yes. Fireflies uh, blow in Japan summer night. Yes, uh, now the rainy season in Japan. So mm. many firefly appeared. Mm. So this uh, the, uh, river is uh, dark. And the firefly viewing is one of Japanese seasonal a traditional viewing, same as cherry blossom viewing. Oh. So, and the firefly deep only pure water. It's a kind of barometer of good and pure environment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> I, you know, I, have, I have lots of fond memories of fireflies 
yeah. from my childhood. So yeah, yeah I love this piece. Mm -hmm. Here's a close up. Oh yes. So only two months, firefly appear. Only oh. two months. Mm -hmm. Two months. Yeah. yeah. Brief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I love the treatment of this piece. It's so layered and so elaborate, like a web. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank and what's you. maybe a little hard to see in this in, in in photographic reproductions, but this kind of lace down here is sort of a a, a shiny iridescent gold. Mm -hmm. um, so it has a special kind of fleeting light to it. It's really really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, what, uh, here's it in context here next to. Yeah. Okay. And then this is um, your international ah. piece, international <laughs> hand -turn. So, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, each country have many beautiful craft. So dyeing, uh, embroidery and beads. So uh, uh, everyone like uh, beautiful craft all over the world. So uh, center core is my image is craft around that core. They support the craft to make craft. So uh, before the uh, con uh, they commute with Silk Road, long, long Silk Road, but now commute by uh, internet. Very mm. amazing. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes, everybody's connected. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. And I love how you depict it yeah. with all the figures on the various orbits. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Makiko. It reminds me of paper dolls that I made me when too. I was small. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So, um, Unhi uh, Lee is our member from South Korea. And this is a, a detail shot of her international piece. And this is her green space. Um, and she talks about how the green spaces in a city are like the lungs, uh, you know, I'm among, I'm among I'm all the concrete. <laughs> yes, that's such a vivid image, isn't yes. it? Mm -hmm. And the way she depicted it. Yeah. Yeah. And she Parks are so important. Yeah. Unhi hand dyes her fabrics. Mm. Mm. And these also, it doesn't quite come across uh, in the, the photos, but have an iridescent mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah. It has a sheen, the overall piece kind of mm -hmm. glows. And it also, it, it reads very differently in different lights. Like sometimes it looks purple and sometimes gray and mm -hmm. really, really unusual. And that was featured on our invite Right. Cover, yeah. Yeah. This I, I love this kind of gradation yeah. out from mm -hmm. the center. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she has uh, this piece called We. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it might be a little hard to tell, but um, this is her international piece, and she used our silhouettes. Yeah. The silhouette of oh. each member in the group. <laughs> Can you and find yourself? Do you see yourself? I know I'm on the top right. I know that's right. I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a while to realize nice. that that's what she had done. But <laughs> she didn't want to tell you, huh? <laughs> and I think she said she used paint sticks after quilt making the quilt uh, base. Stamping right. and uh, yeah, and paint stick. Right, which <laughs> I I have to say, have to say is seems to me to be kind of courageous, right? Because like, isn't it hard to? Oops, I don't like that one, and you can't really remove it, or <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of hard. True. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, lo I love this piece. The color, the color in this piece is great. And, and each one, this, this stitching here is incredible. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. it looks like she stamped what almost looks like bubbles. Yes. Mm -hmm. To kind of tie everything together. Yep. Um, for those, for anyone trying to get a sense of scale, most of these are around 39 or 40 inches high. Right. So that'll give you a sense of, of scale. That's our goal. <laughs> Such a range of techniques from piece to piece. Absolutely. That, that, yeah. no, Incorporation of different media, um, yeah. even, even stepping into some digital, you know, printing realms. So yeah, yeah. really exciting work. We see some. Lisa, are you with us? Yes. Good. Okay. So you have some text on yours as well. And I, um, I have to say that the, the young woman, um, our, our adult education assistant who sits across from this piece is absolutely in love with it. <laughs> so. I don't think right. she, I don't think Caitlin's the only one either. This is no, no, no. uh -uh. a big, big hit, Lisa. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. Especially it in the time sense. of pandemic, I think too, just the, the airport theme, it really speaks to everybody. Thank you, yes, I used to travel yeah. a lot when I was, um, when I was president of SACWA, I traveled a lot and uh, teaching all over the world as well. And um, everywhere is a long way from Australia. So I'm always really tired when I sort of get to places and I was looking for a gate to, um, to get my next flight after traveling for about 20 hours. And uh. I turned a corner and then I just saw this view in front of me. And I, I sort of, I sort of, um, I swore under my breath because it was like, I was never gonna get to my gate. Uh, but luckily they had this walkway. But the, um, the text and stuff that is on the screen was uh, Thermofax screens that I made using airport departure gates things as inspiration. So if you look closely, they, they sort of have those timetables of, um, you know, which, which gate is where, et cetera. So um, mm -hmm. I like using Thermofax yeah. screens and most of my work these days is taken from photographs. So I like to oh. uh, use photographs as, as my starting point and then I manipulate them. Oh. So th this is one of those. This was Salt Lake City in um, wherever oh. Salt Lake City is. So when you say Therm Effect screen, is that the most uh, contemporary form of screen printing, a photo, photo screen printing? Yes, um, it's actually a really old technology. Uh, it was based mm. from when they, before they used to have printers and um, schools used to uh, have them. So most school storerooms um, had them until they started throwing them out. And basically it's just a, an opportunity of taking a black and white image and turning it into a little mini silk screen, which you then um, you just use as a normal silk screen, but they're very useful. And as long as your image is black and white, you can uh, make a silk screen out of anything. When I was a kid, um, my parents were divorced, so we had to fly back to Denver and since I was the oldest, I had to watch my sisters and I was always asking, where's my gate? <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> yes. scary as a kid. It was as scary as, as a kid, especially Chicago O'Hare. <laughs> oh, yes. Airports but, are very, very large places. Yeah. Noisy. Yeah. Complex. You have another piece, yep. um, your green space piece called If Only as well. Yes. Yes. This, this piece... Um, there's a couple of buildings in Sydney where I live uh, that have been designed to have plants growing up all over the outside, and I really love that. Mm -hmm. And so this is my interpretation of just one of those um, buildings, and I'd never worked with perspective, so it was a bit of a learning curve to play around with it. This, this is an imaginary building. It's not the one that's in Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the pieces were fused from my own hand-dyed, pan-printed fabrics, and then in the sky, I did another Thermofax screen of um, environmentally friendly words. Yes, you can see them there. Um, and yeah, don't look too closely because it's all uh, raw edge applique, which is why some of it's sort of, um, 
it frays a little bit. And I also, um, Thermofax printed uh, a vine all over the building and stenciled the trees that are in the, um, in the foreground as well. So there's a lot of paint on there. Um, and oh. yeah, it was really fun actually to, to sort of work out where the lights and the darks were. And the way that you've quilted it with, uh, it's almost a, like the stitching or is like a layer of drawing. Uh, over the whole thing, yes? And how do you yes, do that? You. Um, do well, you... I usually find a motif or something that I can follow. In the, With the text, you can see that I've actually just quilted the text roughly. And for the main part of the building, I use the uh, the vines that I had uh, printed onto the over the outside of the building, and I use them as a starting point. And mm. if... If I need more quilting, then I do lines, as you can see down the bottom. Yeah. It just, for those of us who maybe have only used a sewing machine uh, in home ec class or to hem draperies, I mean, the idea of working so intricately just seems impossible to me with the, with the sewing machine. Yeah, it blows me away. Um, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you get into sort of a hypnotic trance when you're free motion <laughs> quilting and you just sort of do it, put on some nice music and just go for it. Nice. <laughs> so it's a bit of a meditation then. Definitely. You get lost in it. Yeah. Ah. Good. Yeah, beautiful work, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Lisa, someone is asking if you can explain what you mean by fused. Oh, okay. Uh, most most traditional quilters um, take two pieces of fabric and stitch them together with the classic quarter inch seam. And I tend not to. What I do is I use um, a, a, web, a web that you sort of iron on to the back of your fabric. And some of it is paper backed and some of it is not. If it's paper backed, you then peel off the paper. Uh, and it basically makes your fabric something that can be stuck. So every piece on that quilt has actually had a fusible web ironed to the back and then I cut out the shapes and you just iron them on and they just stick to whatever you've got on the background. So uh, for, for these ones, um, I would have a background fabric uh, which I've drawn on and then I cut the shapes out. And if uh, Nathan, if you go back to that close-up image, which is... Um, the one before, I think. Um, yes. So you can see that there's, um, it's just a cut edge and it's the stitching uh, that holds it down. The fusibles are supposed to be uh, relatively permanent, but you always have to stitch them down as well. So uh, if you have a, a very fine weave fabric, they tend not to fray. So I can see little bits of fraying there, which um, I will trim off when I get my quilt home. But uh, normally it, do it doesn't fray because the fusible has gone right to the edge of your cut shape and it, it usually uh, stays permanently in place. You know what we hear often from folks who uh, are roaming the galleries and are just boggled by the craftsmanship is how long does it take someone to make something like this? So I know it varies piece to piece. <laughs> But do you say uh, for, life? Clothing, uh, for clothing common, we have eight weeks to make each quilt. Uh, and I tend to think about what I'm going to do for about four to six weeks and then, um, <laughs> then panic for the final couple of weeks and, and get it done. So wow. that's usually my um, – the thinking part of what you're going to do, uh, I think, for most of us takes most of the time, I think. Mm. I can see some nodding heads there. <laughs> it keeps us productive having that two months timetable yeah <laughs> it's good to have deadlines right it is yes definitely uh, yeah. thanks a lot lisa that's thank you so much good to, good to know a little bit about the the magic behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> the wizards uh our next artist is Catherine. Catherine, are, are you with us? Yes, I am. Oh. Good. Okay. Yep. Uh, please tell us about uh, your work. Let me get uh, 
Uh, this is your green space piece called Mary's Place. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough um, in 2019 to have a trip to Canada and the United States because I, I live in New Zealand. And um, one of my good quilting friends over there, Mary McCauley, lives in Colorado. And she took us up the Rocky Mountains. So um, she a, has a, this wonderful colour in her house and in her garden. And when we went up the Rockies, I was amazed by the aspen trees, I think it is, and the shapes mm. and the colours on those. So my trees, the stems are based with roasted fabric that I do in the oven with tea. Um, oh. So basically cook the fabric like you would a leg of lamb. Um, and that gets your dark shades on the brown. You might just see at the top of the orange pot there that the, the um, oh. fabric's got a little bit of the brown. So if you roast a leg of lamb, the dark bits are usually the chewiest and tastiest when they come out. So when your fabric comes out, they come out of the oven, they come out quite black, and then you wash it out and um, it settles back down to the colour. So I use quite a lot of roasted fabric. Um, oh. I, I hand dye and hand paint all my fabrics, so um, like Lisa. And so that pot's been stenciled. Uh, the background fabric was um, dyed, and then I use lots of thermofaxes on that as well to get some texture, just, just some light texture in the background. So that's totally uh, relates to Mary and our trip to Colorado. What kind of dyes do you use? Do you use botanicals or procyon? Or... Procyon, yeah. And yeah. That's so counterintuitive to put um, cloth in, a... <laughs> yeah. in an oven. Yeah. I, I would have gotten in trouble doing that <laughs> when I was younger, but... <laughs> I like, the, I, I like the yeah. descriptor, roasted fabric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I use oh, it a lot. Interesting. Yeah, Colorado is a beautiful, a beautiful place. But so is New Zealand, oh, isn't it? I, mm. Oh, yeah, New Zealand's, New Zealand's beautiful, um, without a doubt. Mm. Uh, Colorado is. We had a wonderful time. Um, and coming from a smaller country like New Zealand, which is quite mountainous in places and flat, you know, other places, it was quite, um, quite similar, in the, but it was just miles and miles of flat land as well. But um, Mary lives in Fort Collins and we went all over the place. It was just fantastic. And, and the mm. colours and the, the trip up the Rockies, I really, really enjoyed. Oh, wow. That's, that's where I went to college, was Colorado oh, right. State. Now, I, I also want to say, do you know, sometimes we get people um, emailing us from Dunedin, New Zealand, to find out what we have going on at the Arts Center. <laughs> <laughs> they get the Dunedin <laughs> mixed up. Yeah, that's happened. I've, 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 yeah. I've got a typical friend in Dunedin. I could almost say who it was that, that uh, oh, contacted did that? me. Okay. <laughs> but a lot of work into galleries, which in New Zealand we don't have that opportunity very much. Uh, I must say that your second piece I've just found so so powerful and beautiful. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the nine eleven attacks. We all knew everybody around the world were glued to the TV, and um, our heart went out to everybody. And I've had two trips since then back to the States. And the first one was when there were, the memorial um, was all being built. And then the second one, we actually got to go inside. And I was absolutely uh, blown away by the, the things inside the museum, particularly the pillars, the concrete pillars and all the, all the pipes sticking out of them. And, and like Lisa, you know, I take a lot of photos. And so what I wanted to do was sort of try, try and portray how um, you know, you feel like you're in a building, you feel so safe, and yet it can sort of crumble because of some other act. And and where I live, we had massive earthquakes back in 2010 and in 2011, and you sort of had the same sort of sense of something that should protect you doesn't quite protect you that way. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to portray. Um, and with the hand stitching on it, that was sort of to um, connect with the people who lost their lives and, and those that lost, you know, their loved ones. Mm. Yeah. Huh. The, the mm -hmm. simplicity and the palette, um, the, spa the spareness, just so elegant and powerful. Thank you. The, um, yeah, well, the techniques in this one, I think the fabric is a combination of roasted and then rusted over top. 
Mm. Um, and some, I think the frame around the center actually is flower pasted. So, you know, you put some flower paste on a screen, let it dry, let it crack, and then um, paint your dye over top of it. Uh, mm. And then for the pipes coming out of the, uh, out of the textural piece, I wanted I used rope and, and hand stitched over those so that mm. you had I wanted I needed that sense of protrusion. Yeah. Yeah. Great work. It, yeah, it really yeah. That was a truly an international event, although <clears throat> it happened in our country. It's it yeah, its reverberations are still being felt. So yes. I'll, me yeah. I'll mention that uh, I have gone for most of my time at the Art Center to the American Alliance of Museums annual meeting, which is in a big city, a different major city in the US every year, but people from all over the world come who are from all sorts of museums. And uh, I remember the inception of the 9-11 museum and how many years it took them to gather and, and you know make those decisions of how to present that. Um, so I know it was a very thoughtful process. It's an amazing experience, I have to say. Just amazing. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next from Canada. <laughs> Around the world we go. Is, uh, Hi. Hi. Hi, Regina. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having us all. It's a pleasure to be here and talk about our work. Yeah. Uh, yes, so my first piece in the exhibition is um, the Garden Green Spaces and Parks prompt. And I want to read the full prompt because I stopped with the first word, the garden. Uh, this piece is called Nurturing Seeds. And uh, as Carol mentioned, that was our prompt during the pandemic. So um, I live in a very small town in a rural area, so we don't need the big city parks. And, you know, I just walk five minutes and I am in a wood, wooded area or a green space or so. So I was thinking about the gardens that people have here. People tend to their gardens. They love their gardens. We have a lot of people that have vegetable beds. And being in Canada, in Nova Scotia, um, our growing season is quite short. So we can't plant anything outside really before June. Uh, so what people do is they, they have all their little seedlings in the house and, and plant the seeds and put them in those little seed trays and little pots and, and wait for the plants to be large enough and hardy enough to, to get outside. So that's, that's what my piece is about so um I made three panels and I, I used a technique I use a lot in my work which is um, printing with the so-called gel printing plate so that's a very soft printing plate that takes imprints for example of leaves and natural material beautifully and then I put my cloth on top and, and print it and I do print in layers so I have different multi sure. multi layers of color uh, so if you go back to to the full picture you can see that i started i made a template of a seed tray so i started uh up above with the seeds in there and then the next panel in the middle is when the little seedlings start to grow and i actually used uh little leaves mint leaves from my garden for that and then the, the lower panel is when you have the strong, big plants outside. And again, this was done with actual plant material on my printing plate. Oh. And then I, I puzzled those pieces together and collaged them with um, other hand uh, painted or hand dyed fabrics that I have in my stash. And sometimes I actually paint the fabrics to, to fit uh, a certain idea that I have, so especially for the pieces. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. how this piece came about. And then um, if you go to the detail, I did a lot of machine stitching around all those little plant shapes or the larger plant mm -hmm. shapes, and also a lot of hand stitching in, in this piece. Can I ask you, Regina, when you sure. say um, you're printing on the fabric, are you using a brayer 
with pressure or do you have a press or no i don't use a press it's a gel plate which is a very soft printing plate so you can do it with a brayer or even with your hands mm. uh, with the plant material i put the cloth on uh, so I, I put a layer of color and then i put the plant material on and then i use my hands mostly to smoosh the fabric on top and around the plant material mm. and if you take the plants off that's the second print, they call it uh, the ghost print. Uh, then you still have the color underneath where the plant material was. So that's what you actually see in this third uh, uh, panel down at the bottom is, is the ghost print of that actual plant material. So you get very fine detailed prints of all the little leaves and, and stems and veins and whatnot. Uh, so that's, that's uh, a lot of fun to do and I used it extensively in my work yeah. you know the overall piece has a, a, a sort of watercolor feel a watercolor effect that's so beautiful and, and that's subtle. Uh, something else i like about this kind of printing plate that you can get very soft colors and light light layers that you can layer on top and uh it, it's a it's a very painterly um technique i would say it is yes yeah, and it hangs beautifully there. Yeah, so this is my uh, second piece. Uh, and this is a 40 by 40 inch square to the uh, international um, prompt. That was kind of an easy prompt for me because uh, I'm international in that I'm a German citizen living in Canada. So I still have strong connections to Germany. We came to Canada um, 18 years ago. Ah. Yes. Yeah, so I wanted to show that I have this dual allegiance to, to both countries. And I thought about how I would represent the countries in my piece. And I didn't want to resort to any cliches like whatever beer for Germany <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, hockey for Canada. No, no. So I decided to, um, because I was working with a lot of plant material that year, I wanted to have leaves in, in that quilt as well. I decided to make those large leaves. Um, the uh, the uh, colors of those leaves actually correspond to the flag colors. So the maple leaf, the Canadian maple leaf, I, I have, the red in there um, and a little bit of white and the other one is an oak leaf which is kind of the national leaf in Germany it's uh, on our, our euro currency and everywhere so uh, the the German flag is red has like this gold, golden yellow and black so I have all those uh, flag colors in the two leaves and then the background is monoprinted with um, mm -hmm. black on white I added a little bit of blue because I also lived in Australia for two years. So I wanted to have a little bit of the Australian flag in there. So that's just a light touch of, of blue in the background. But yeah, for me, that prompt was an easy prompt. It's not always that easy. Uh, I like how you put the shadows of the leaves as well for that dimensionality and the variety of the variety of um stitching in here yeah. is really exciting too so thank you it's yeah. got leaf shapes and circular shapes and loop-de-loops <laughs> i'm curious how you decided to move to canada uh it's my husband's work mostly he is a professor at a university here and uh um, when we left Germany, it was really hard to for him to stay in his field. And then we got an offer from somebody in Canada to come for five years. And, you know, we're still here and <laughs> we're not going to go back. We're happy. Um, I have to say last year, I, I really missed going back to Germany and, and see our friends and relatives there. But um, hopefully it'll come soon. And I, I still have really... Uh, lots lots of strong connections to to germany sure yes thank you thanks yeah. thank you regina oh. uh, okay martha wrestler is hi. our next artist from pennsylvania hi how are you fine how are you doing, doing well. 
<laughs> so we've enjoyed uh, enjoyed your work. Yes. As well. um, got some really interesting techniques here. Uh, could you tell us more about follow the path and dye sublimation and and all of that? Yeah. Well, these are two very different techniques. The dye sublimation was my first um, experiment with that. I met a guy through some other work that I was doing that uh, does this in his studio for people. Dye sublimation is different than the printing I'm, I normally get done on cotton. It has to be done on polyester, 100% polyester. Mm. So I'd never gone out to buy yards of white polyester before, but that's what I had, <laughs> <laughs> had to get to, um, to do this. So yeah, I gave him the photo I wanted to use. Um, my thought was, I, I knew when I almost immediately with the green spaces um, prompt that what leads me into it is a path. It's, there's always the importance of a path, paths through forest, paths through your yard, paths through um, parks. Um, it, it, the path is always important in my mind, but I, I couldn't find a reference photo. I couldn't take a reference. I just was not, nothing was working until I saw this photo that um, my friend Annie Mora Simcoe had taken. She's a dirt bike rider and um, took this of um, her friend riding the bike on the path in this green space. So that was, that was it. That was what was in my imagination. So I got this printed. I, I just had like a you know, it was a, a, a sample. I had a sample printed and then I had this printed. I didn't even know if I was going to use it because I'd never tried it before. But the color was just so sort of brilliant and different than it looked on um, just regular printing on cotton. So, yeah, I, I used it. And then, you know, I just added some, some spots and some, um, you know, some different areas. It's all hand stitched. Um, and um, yeah, that's my follow the path. And did, there are little, I, I don't know that we have any more photos, but like the dragonfly, there are hidden little uh, gems of, I think there's an owl or a, there are other animals hidden in oh, there and there are little collage, there, yeah. collage yeah. patches, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the bottom areas really beautifully worked. And, yeah, and some of these, some of, of, of these little stitches, stitches you know, so remind me of in there. <laughs> Pardon. Oh, some. I was just going to say, some of these stitches remind me a little bit of uh, fireflies. <laughs> yeah, they kind of do. It's seed stitching. You've seen them on other people's work, but it's mm -hmm. just um, you can make them different uh, lengths, but you try to do them all about the same length and and all different angles. You don't. You make care. You make. Try not to have the ones next to each other at the same angle. I like how that the treatment of the bottom leads you right into the piece as well. So the composition is really. Well, so that's what I was thinking. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, we found this one very, very fascinating too. Oh, yeah. Postcards from China. Completely different technique. I was traveling in China in 2019, and I've often, when I'm traveling, I make little quilts, um, little five by seven as I go. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those little things, I was incorporating um, souvenirs and bits of paper and cloth that I brought along and cloth that I bought and little drawings and all kinds of different things um, from the experience. When I was there, the, there were big demonstrations uh, around the, you see that slogan, free Hong Kong. Um, and the, the police, you know, hadn't really cracked down severely at the time that we were there. Um, but we were, you know, following it and went to the locations and, um, I, I had a lot of mixed feelings um, on both sides while we were there, but um, I guess to put it briefly, I, I, I wish that they could get along, 
um, Hong Kong and mainland China. I would like to see the democratic rights in both. Um, but, um, and that, that red ribbon that um, I picked up, you know, in China, that kind of, you know, in my mind, unifying um, the experiences and the, and the images from both parts of China. The background is a piece of, of silk I bought in Shanghai in the Silk District. Um, the, the, you know, that beautiful sort of ancient um, free watercolor Chinese brushwork. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. I used that for the background and added some, some additional leaves and such and then um, hand stitched the whole thing. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, this, one, this, this one takes a little time to explore with all the little all the details on the postcards. Mm -hmm. It's been a fun one to, to kind of take in. I love the idea that as an artist, you bring your, your elements with you so you can create as you travel. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, this particular trip was, I had extra depth because I was on a cruise and the cruise company Viking, I'd never seen them do this before, but they put in the program, any crafters who want to get together, meet on deck something, you know, deck five at <laughs> two o'clock or whatever. So a bunch of us all, all with every different kind of needlework that we'd snuck in our brief. Oh. In our <laughs> every, we didn't, hadn't met each other before and just okay. sat around, you know, for several days and ended up palling around together and sharing tips and tricks. And, um, oh, it was just wonderful. It was- That is wonderful. High point of the entire trip and, um, yeah, I love that. Mm. Well, thanks for sharing, Martha. It's really fascinating. Well, thank you for asking. Thank you, Martha. I'll have to remember to bring my my supplies next time I <laughs> send my travel. Yeah. Make some new friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, hailing from Alaska. Uh, our next artist is Maria uh, Shell. Maria? Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. hi, Maria. Hello. Uh, yeah, come on in. Thanks for <laughs> being here with us today. Mm. Yeah, thank you for having us. So, we, got, uh, we got some really beautiful work um, from you, um, including this piece, White Out. Uh, tell us more about... <laughs> green space in Alaska. <laughs> right. Well, that was, you know, with the prompts, I, I almost always go with my immediate response. And uh, my immediate response was green space, our green space is white. And it, I mean, it's not all the time, like right now, it's not white, although we've had a really, really mild summer. So we've, we have snow back on the tops of the mountains again. Um, but that is really just the idea that uh, I live in a lot of green space and feel very fortunate. And we spend most of the year in Anchorage where we have incredible trails that go all the way around. You can get all over town um, via these trails. And some of them in the winter are cross country trails for cross country skiing. Some of them are dog sledding trails. Wow. And in the summer they're multi-use, but then in the winter they um, summer stay multi-use and then they change. But it's just an incredible part of being up here, and it's kind of counterintuitive that, um, well, for example, we are like we're definitely in the top ten. I want to say top five of people that commute to work on their bicycles, and you would think that doesn't make sense because we wow. live in a subarctic climate, but people really enjoy being outdoors but our outdoors is often covered with white um snow and the other component i guess of this quilt is that i often work in this traditional quilt block called the crossed square and so i just and i often work with a lot of colors so this was sort of an experiment in working with that traditional block in a really restricted muted palette and just sort of a, a type of white out really yeah yeah it's nice how that the the pattern the cross square pattern kind of sits sits back and it takes a while to to come yeah. out at you 
Mm-hmm. I mean, really, it just kind of emerged as you were speaking about it for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so subtle. Really Now, nice. I haven't asked anybody before you, Maria, but how did you get into quilting? Uh, well, I've always sewn. So that, I mean, from very, very, I started sewing when I was four. So I don't, I, all wow. memories are associated with sewing, but I'd never made a quilt until we moved to Valdez, Alaska, which is this remote uh, mountain village. It's the terminus of the pipeline, the uh, Alaska pipeline. And there's a quilt shop there. So I took my first class and it really um, was, uh, I think we've all, everyone here has had a life-changing experience with quilt making, most yeah. likely. But that really, I haven't just, that became the trajectory of my life, really. Now, when you speak about the traditional block, have you participated in the new quilts from an old favorite uh, through the Paducah uh, National Quilt Museum? Have you ever submitted to that? I have not, but I have many of those catalogs and they are yeah. super inspiring. Yeah. Um, just the taking... What people can do with a traditional quilt block is fascinating. Yes. Yeah. We've had a number of those traveling shows at the Art Center in our biannual uh, commitment to show fiber arts over the years. And yes, it really is a fabulous show and people all over the world again. Um, it's just some amazing work. But this was my favorite one of yours. I just love this one. It seems it. You know, it's it's also a traditional quilt block um, or a variation on it, I should say. Um, so the story, I think I wrote about it in my artist statement. We when we get the prompt, it's pretty exciting. Like you're kind of waiting for it. What who what is what's someone going to pick for the next prompt? But and I was checking my phone to find out what that prompt was because I was, I think, leaving New Zealand. I like Lisa Walton prior to COVID used to travel all over teaching. And I was teaching in New Zealand and headed home and the prompt was international and I had gotten bumped up to first class and the, I was on Alaska Airlines and the, um, the upholstery in first class is this color palette and actually is very similar to this design. And I thought, I've always liked that upholstery and I just thought I'm going to try and do, which seems like such a crazy sort of leap, like international airline flight upholstery <laughs> quilt, but that's how we got there. Yeah. Well, if I, what I like about this piece is if you, if you stare at it long enough, it starts to jiggle and jaggle because these lines You know, there's there's a set of horizontal lines and then vertical and then horizontal and then vertical. And if you just kind of look in the middle, the, the it starts to wiggle waggle. So I enjoy <laughs> the movement in this piece. I also like in the photograph how the shadow kind of plays into the whole palette, the shadow mm-hmm. of the the bottom <laughs> hem. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Thank you. Yes. Yep. I actually did another piece. Thank you, Maria. Oh. Yeah, uh, I have another. I liked this color palette and these units so much that I um, they actually morphed into another piece, which is called Spin Cycle. It's similar but different. It's actually a morphing of those units with the crossed square units. Um, so, yeah, mm. that often happens for me. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, moving down the coast, the west coast of the United States to Oregon, uh, we have Terry Grant. Hello. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having us. What part of Oregon do you live in? I live just outside Portland in um, a suburb called Beaverton. Okay. Nice. So, uh, We're, we're familiar with wetlands. We have lots of them here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have no um, alligators in our wetlands here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have lots of birds. And our, my little 
community of Beaverton has a lot of walking trails. That's one of the things I love about it. And a friend and I walk almost every day in the wetlands. And we love to see the seasons change and, and see the birds in the wetlands. So I was actually the one who um, proposed the theme of um, green spaces. Uh, and And my piece has no green in it, but it's well, uh, I guess there's a little green on the horizon, but um, this is one of my favorite green spaces, uh, a trail that I walk every day. Yeah, it has a feeling of a of an Asian screen to me. This so beautiful. A lot well, of people you. drawn to this piece. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's a simple... I, oh, 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 no, I want I want to ask if there are beavers. There are beavers. Yes. <laughs> there better be. There better be. Uh, <laughs> there better be beavers. And the beavers are responsible for this green space. There's a little creek that runs through the area, and the dams that the beavers build have flooded that whole area into this wonderful kind of green space and little ponds and, and kind of marshy areas. So, uh, yes, we do have beavers. Um, we don't see the beavers, but we see their work frequently. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Now the branches and the leaves that is that, is that screen printing? Um, no, it's not actually. I start, I bought myself several years ago, a, a cutting machine that I can scan my drawings into and then send material through this cutting machine and it will cut these very intricate patterns, which wow. saves me hours of work yeah. with, with little pair of scissors. Um, my machine will cut those for me. And I, I use a non-woven fabric, um, kind of like an interfacing and paint it the colors that I want, put the fusible material that Lisa was talking about on the back of it, and then send it through my cutting machine. And then I'm able to attach it to the fabric um, just wow. by wearing it down. And I usually um, stitch on top of it as well. Oh my God, yes. that must be so, it must be like um, working with a spider web when it's <laughs> delicate. I mean, to have the, the, the drawing layer. It is, yeah. It's yeah. very, it's very delicate. Um, but boy, is that machine a, a boon to what <laughs> I love to do. Yes. Uh, yeah, I imagine trying to cut all that by hand would give you a carpal tunnel within an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, technology is really affecting art makers around the world in every media. In, uh, in, in, in good ways, new tools, right? Not, right? Absolutely. Yes. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> and this and is such a beautiful, endearing piece. I love your story behind it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, this is my, my dear friend, Chela, or Graciela, which is her real name. And she is the grandmother, the other grandmother of my grandchildren. She is the mother of my son-in-law. And when my daughter married a man from Ecuador, our family became international. So we have visited back, back and forth quite a lot over the years. And she's become very dear to me. And I love the fact that the Spanish language um, gives a, presents a word to us uh, for our relationship she is mi consuegra uh, which is my co-mother-in-law sort of yes. yeah, it's so telling is isn't it that a lang that by by what we um give give name to and power to in language what we what, what we honor that's very very it telling. does it it feels very special to me that that there is an actual word for that relationship because it, you know, when people marry, their families marry each other in, in a sense. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, Absolutely. it's good to, to be able to use that word. Yes. I'm, I'll bet she, she enjoys um, that you've 
done her portrait as well. <laughs> well, I was I was nervous about letting her see it. Um, I didn't know whether she would be embarrassed or insulted, uh, or but she was very very pleased. Oh, beautiful! Good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. I, I just—it's so interesting to see every everyone's different approaches here. Um, oh, wow. You know, you're using this kind of a completely different stitch than some other artists have been using. So, I'm also noticing the um, submerged pattern in the purpley blue. Was that a, a hand dyed fabric? Yes, it, it came out more subtle than I intended. Is it but, um, <laughs> that Those stencil designs on there are um, indigenous Ecuadorian um, mm. designs. And this woman, um, Chela, is from a, a village in Ecuador that has a very old... Uh, history with uh, Inca Indians and um, very historic area. So I wanted to just sneak that in in just a very, very subtle way hmm. because she's a very modern woman and yeah. thinks of herself as very modern. But okay. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah, she, she looks like a strong, strong woman, proud, happy. She is. She um, unfortunately was in the hospital for about a month with COVID this year and, and it has very oh. much affected her health, but um, mm. she's, she's recovering. Okay. Well, our thoughts are with her. Well, thanks a lot, Terry. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you for hearing. having our work. Looks oh, like a welcome. beautiful space. I wish everybody could be here with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice to have a party. <laughs> hey, and I'd really love to have some anyone who's interested in coming to teach with us. Yes. Yep. We have um, one of our other shows, uh, the Tent Makers of Cairo. They're coming, oh. a couple of them are coming in from Cairo to conduct a workshop. So we're really yep. excited about that. But yes, we love to have that component to our our uh, our fiber shows. Definitely. Carol Carol's mm -hmm. taught workshops in prior when we had a solo show of her work in the past. So we so think keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a trip to Florida, yeah, when, we, the, when things get we keep we keep down. moving south here. <laughs> Going to California now. <laughs> Deb, are you with us? I am. <laughs> Good. Hey. Good. Now, uh, see, yeah, your work, your work is a little bit more um, on the abstract side, which which I enjoyed very much. Uh, this one's Hong Kong Park. Yeah, that one was um, because, like um, several of the people, I live in a very rural area where I have lots of green space to begin with. And so I chose to uh, depict Hong Kong Park because Hong Kong is a, you know, is the opposite basically of where I live. And mm -hmm. Hong Kong Park is just this wonderful uh, green space. And so I just decided to do that. I like how you referenced the, uh, the bridge grid being similar to the street grid. Yes, I, I put in put in some little red X's in there to um, uh, remind me of the flowers, the, the Bohemia flower in Hong oh. Kong, and mm -hmm. then the streets, the grids, and I just enjoy hand stitching. So that's why all the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a very active surface. It's yes. a very beautiful to experience in person. It's and almost I, like it's alive. I love the name of that seed stitching. I like that. Well, I have another name for it oh. com coming from a friend who do is not a 
is not a, a crafter or a quilter. She called it maggot stitching. And <laughs> I think that's kind of... <laughs> Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's about how it looks. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I forget really, we heard that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the, the quilt that I really like is the other one that you yes. have here. Is the, the, the interesting thing about this one is... Um, listening to people talk, I was noting how a lot of them started with photographs for their quilts. Mm -hmm. And this quilt actually started with another quilt that I took a photograph of mm -hmm. and printed, manipulated and printed on fabric. So mm -hmm. if you look in the sort of top middle, um, you'll see what in that dark area yes right there that's a side seam of a pair of jeans oh okay so there's so yeah. the reason that it's called indigo is i was using a bunch of indigo fabrics on this first on this the quilt that ah. inspired this piece and um i just decided that i didn't want to make it 40 inches wide or 40 inches tall i wanted it to be larger so i went um, decided, well, I'll just take a picture of what I was working on and um, uh, go with. We were with trying that. to find the belt loops. We were, um, the we were... belt loops are <laughs> over, I think, to the side, to the uh, right side. Um, hmm. You can see right, right, I think right just below your arrow there oh, okay. I think that's uh oh, one of the belt loops but I have a whole bunch of belt loops yes in the <laughs> in the piece and then I take my photos into photoshop and manipulate them and oh, come out with amazing things and mm -hmm. that I like sometimes or not <laughs> <laughs> and this is another piece that has for me a very much watercolor feel yeah, it's not usually the colors I work with, like Maria's uh, white out color. I, I work with a lot of bright colors. And mm. so this one was a was a, it, a departure. It feels very collage-ish too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, Deb, if you could briefly, I was exploring your website. By the way, um, on each of these artists' um, intro cards, uh, we've listed everyone's websites, so um, there's further exploration <clears throat> if you're interested in um, an artist's work. In looking at your website, Deb, pixelladies.com, you have a, 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 a partner in crime? I have a partner in crime for my Pixel Ladies work. So one of the reasons I joined Cloth in Common was to create some of my own work. And so I had a couple of uh, rules for myself because we, the Pixel Ladies uses a lot of text. So I tried not to use any text during the, uh, in the creation of these uh, work. And I was trying to stick with abstract and some of the prompts just weren't lending themselves to, you know, ab, you know, for me, I couldn't get an abstract out of it. And so um, I'm, for the next round, I'm going to be changing my style completely. I'm going to be doing all pieced work instead of mm. printed work. So, okay, now I must ask who chose the next themes and what are they? <laughs> the, the, the theme that we're working on now was chosen by Carol and it's faces. Oh, ah. Oh. Oh, so Carol. <laughs> Carol does great portraits she and sure mine does. has not one person in it. So. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. However, our, our whole two-year theme is structures. Oh, so okay. we're starting with the structure of faces. Okay, gotcha. Because this one was communities and these were the, right. the subs. Right. Okay. Ah, Okay, well, we're looking forward to seeing those. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, maybe you and he has got to jump on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She put your silhouettes in there. So. 
Yeah, that well, you know that like some that. of these prompts are you could you could reuse the quilts, but you know, mm. like if you were in college and you were writing a paper <laughs> about a topic, you'd say, "Oh, well, I could do that one uh, <laughs> over again." Me, you know, you, just me. use that one again. But that was sort of not keeping with the spirit of the group. No, <laughs> you guys wouldn't do that because you're artists. You shouldn't have given us yeah. the idea, Deb. <laughs> Enter the seed now. <laughs> oh, now all the way south to Florida. <laughs> this is a uh, Carol, of course, is our our last speaker today. Um, so, uh, so I'll try to be short and sweet. Um, Maria was talking about getting excited about hearing what the next prompt is, um, but I always get so excited when it's reveal time at the end of the two months, because as you can see, everyone approaches it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it's, to me, it's like Christmas morning to see mm -hmm. <laughs> the results. Um, so this is my green spaces quilt. We were making these during what I call the summertime, which I know is not the same as what Lisa might call the summertime in Australia, but um, it's extremely hot here. So I was spending a lot of time in my pool and we have these large croton plants around the pool. And I was inspired by um, the patterning and the colors in the leaves. And um, I also had a copy of Maria's book. She has a book, um, Improv piece, Piecing, something like that. Mm -hmm. Improvisational, is that yeah. correct? Improv patchwork. Patchwork, improv nice. patchwork. And so I used some techniques that I saw in her book where you sew lots of strips and that's how I built my leaves. Nice. Yeah. So that's that. really nice piece. Yeah. I love the, the bold uh, sequencing of the dark green and white leaves. Yeah. And I do know crotons. And wow, are those, <laughs> those are splashy subjects. Yes. So I can, I can understand the appeal there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love so those plants. That was yeah. a fun one. Yeah. And normally I use a lot of pattern. Um, I think this one has some plaid. Yeah, there's some plaid and stripes. And, a little bit of floral in there, along with the solids. Well, now, Carol, I only know from your past work that you, um, at least in some of your past portrait quilts, mm -hmm. that you like to upcycle, use upcycled fabrics. So do you, did you get some of these from uh, some- Absolutely. Shirts. Shows yeah. And, yep. Lots of shirts right. and skirts and dresses. Yes. <laughs> Nice. That's a great way to reuse uh, people's clothes even, right? And you can see that I, um, I hand applique my pieces. Yeah. And then this one was machine quilted. Yeah, I love this, this texture over here. It's really nice. Thank you. Um, and <laughs> speaking of um, collected fabrics, your next piece, you oh. brought these from Japan. Yes. Um, Lisa Walton led a tour of Japan. Uh, I think it was January 2018. And I was one of the last ones on board. <laughs> and it was a two week tour where we got to do um, different workshops, fiber art workshops along the way. We traveled a lot. We saw so much. And I think it was maybe the fourth or fifth day when I told her that I could go home tomorrow and just be so happy about everything I've seen and done already. Mm. So it was a truly wonderful experience. Um, mm. I was so impressed with uh, the culture and uh, the way that people treat one another. Um, mm. So I did purchase these fabrics. Um, I think this section is one that I started while we were on trains and buses while we were there. Um, mm. And so I, I titled this Meditation and Praise because uh, hand stitching is meditative. And uh, I just was, again, very impressed with the people in Japan. 
Um, so that's my international piece. Carol, what, do, what is a boro, a boro, B O R? Uh, okay, we, one of the places we visited was the Boro Museum. Is that right, Lisa? And they have all kinds of clothing that uh, if it gets worn out, they don't toss it, they patch it and repair it with hand stitching. And some of these, uh, their shoes, their pants, their jackets um, were had multiple patches on them. So uh, this is what I was trying to kind of imitate. And when I finished it, I wanted to take it out and beat it with rocks <laughs> to make it look old. Oh. But, I, but I held back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really lovely piece. I, I like it a lot. I wish our, um, yes. we have uh, a woman who teaches Sumier um, painting Yes. at the art center named um, Noriko Kuhn. I know she would love this piece, but oh, she's, yeah. she's in Japan now. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're coming home soon. <laughs> no. Uh, wow, yeah, lovely, lovely work. One of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, um, I just wanted to say that uh, it, it was not easy to get commitments from all of these artists, uh, but it was like magic when each time one agreed to join this group. So again, I appreciate all of you. And um, uh, thank you, Dunedin Fine Arts Center for <laughs> inviting us to share. Thank, thank you. you, I can't wait to come over and see the show. Okay. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Good, good. Now, if I can just mention, Carol, that one of our other shows, the Social Justice Sewing Academy, as it turned out when Carol was delivering her pieces for the Cloth and Common show. As it turns out, um, the Social Justice Sewing Academy works with mentor quilters and then youth across the nation going into schools, community centers, prisons, and teaching uh, youth how to design a story block and then the volunteer quilters do the piecing. And then, and right now, part of uh, what the Social Justice Sewing Academy is presenting across uh, the US is the Remembrance Project, which is uh, honoring victims of violence. And Carol is one of the volunteers for the Social Justice Sewing Academy, <laughs> we found out. So well, was... and I, I think Maria has uh, done that in the past oh. as well. She has worked with that. Group okay. Too. Ah, yeah, that was. And, and so, really Catherine, can you would you um, be able to tell us for anyone who wanted to get involved, where would they? I would. I would direct you at, at the gallery. We have actually. I think it's just the SJSA's um, website address, but they have a very active uh, presence on Facebook. And um, you can, yeah, you can become part of that uh, mission. Right. Unfortunately, it's something that we can't keep up with because so many people uh, I are see. affected. Um, so they can really use people like us to volunteer to help. Thank yeah. you, Carol. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for taking time out of your day, your morning, your evening, <laughs> all around the world. Uh, we really enjoyed hearing from everyone and are so glad to have your work in the Art Center and sharing it with our community. Um, very avid um, quilting community, by the way, um, who's just really enjoyed um, this summer's exhibits. And it looks like we're getting more visitors next week. So we're happy about that as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> it's it's some... a beautiful space, beautiful space, mm -hmm. and yes. some really, really wonderful and thought-provoking work this summer. That's right. <clears throat> we have some um, great workshops and um, coming up uh, with Joe Cunningham and um, two members of the Tent Makers of Cairo, uh, Ahmed Kamal and Tarek Abdelhe are coming from Cairo uh, at the end, uh, middle of August, at the end of the show, at the end of the summer exhibit. So if you're in the area, 
and you want to take a take a workshop with with these uh, fine artists, that would be uh, wonderful. And you can there's uh, information on our website dfac.org, um, or you can give us a call, or come on in, and we'll give you all the information that you need. Um, again, it's Monday through Friday, ten to five. I'll mention that Joe's is virtual. Joe's out in California, and it's very reasonable. Mm. His uh, his virtual um, okay. yep. workshop. Yep. Excellent. Um, another another mm -hmm. great event that we're going to have um, around the tent makers exhibit is uh, we've made friends with Dr. Sam Bowker, um, who's living in Sydney, Australia. And he specializes in the tent makers uh, work um, and the history of it. Um, and he's offered to give a lecture uh, for us. So that's Wednesday, July 28th at 7 p.m. Florida time. For those of you in Australia or in that area, it would be Thursday, July 29th um, at 9 a.m. So um, that's going to be really, really great. To, to hear more. And um, he's written this book here, The Tent Makers of Cairo. Uh, so it's, it's, that's uh, another supplement that we have to the exhibitions. So I hope you'll be able to join us on that too. That's a <clears throat> registration required just like today. Um, you can find that again on our website on the event page. Mm -hmm. um, is there any more questions uh, for the artists? Okay. We're well, so grateful to each of the artists and to everyone in attendance. What a right. great turnout and really what an honor to have your work with us. I, I think someone was asking in the chat earlier um, how Dunedin Fine Arts Center found us, Cloth and Common, oh. and invited us. And um, actually, I invited us <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carol is a fabulous advocate, guys. She's very uh, forward, you know, in her efforts and very patient and persistent because we're, especially these last, uh, you know, couple of years, it's been a little, little crazy in the planning. And uh, it's, it's not easy to gather work from all over the world. No kidding. Yes. And everything is, is iffy. Yeah, and we typically plan a couple of years out. So, but you have a wonderful advocate in Carol, guys. She's on it. 